Suppose we can find an ideal motor and generator that do not have any resistance in its windings nor any friction in its shafts. Let's further suppose that we connect them with two lengths of cable that do not have any resistance and that behave as an ideal conductor. Also imagine that we attach a pulley to each one and connect them by means of a belt which, of course, should not be affected by friction against the inner walls of the pulleys. The idea is that, somehow, we set the machines in motion. The electrical energy generated by the generator will be fed to the motor, which will then turn the generator, thus creating a machine that will work forever without any fuel. Electricity will be present in the cables connecting the generator to the motor, supposedly enough to run all the electrical appliances around the house. The problem is that even if we manage to get ourselves a generator and a motor which are free from resistance and friction losses, as soon as you connect a load to the cables, the energy that turns both machines will be used up and scattered into space. Let's suppose that our first attempt to extract energy from our newly built machine is done by using a light bulb of, say, about 20 watts. As soon as we make the connection, the bulb will start producing light and heat, which are emitted to the outside of the machine, and in a very short time, the machine will stop. If the light bulb were also as free from losses as the rest of the machine, it would not produce any light or heat, as it would emit no energy, as if it did not exist. Unfortunately, we are building our experiment on too many assumptions. There is no generator without any losses between the applied kinetic energy and the electrical energy produced. The wires that make up the windings will for sure have a certain amount of resistance. The bearings holding its shaft also have a certain degree of friction. So part of the energy applied is lost in the form of heat. Going further in the chain, the cables connecting the generator to the motor will also lose some energy in the form of heat. The energy being fed to the windings of the motor will also be affected by the resistance of the wires in the motor windings. This energy is lost in the form of heat. The bearings holding the motor shaft will also have some friction losses, thus producing heat. Up to this point, a large part of the initial energy has been lost in the form of heat and we still have to transfer the kinetic energy to the generator by means of the belt so it can produce more energy to drive the motor. Naturally, the energy fed to the motor will accumulate all the losses mentioned above. We have a serious problem to operate our machine continuously and we have not yet produced enough electrical power for any single appliance in the house. Since the machine cannot continue to run due to the above losses, it will be impossible for it to produce energy to run as a free power supply for our household appliances. Maybe we come up with the idea of using some device such as a step-up transformer, which can increase the voltage produced by the generator in order for the voltage applied to the motor to become higher. Here another problem arises. When a transformer is used to raise the voltage, it does so by reducing the amount of current it can provide to the motor. In addition, the wires in the coil of the transformer also have certain amount of resistance, so energy is lost in the transformer in the form of heat. Due to all the above, 
You cannot get energy from nothing unless you discover a flaw in the law of thermodynamics. Regardless of the complexity involved, perpetual motion machines cannot produce energy on their own. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So, for all practical purposes, perpetual motion is impossible.